fungi are eukaryotic organisms that include microorganisms such as yeast, mold, and mushroom. These organisms are classified under kingdom fungi. They are also classified as heterotrophs among the living organisms because they cannot produce their own food. Almost all the fungi have a filamentous structure except the yeast cell. They can be either single cell or multicellular organisms. Fungi consist of long thread like structure known as hyphae. These hyphae together form a bridge like structure called mycelium. Fungi also possess a cell wall which is made out of chitin and polysaccharide. The cell wall composed of protoplasm which is differentiated into other cell parts such as cell membrane, cytoplasm, cell organelle, and nuclei. Last but not least, the nucleus is dense, clear with chromatin tape. It's also surrounded by the nuclear membrane. Hi, I'm Marsha. I will talk about characteristic and classification in fungi. Fungi exhibit a variety of unique characteristics that distinguish them from other organisms. Here are some key characteristics. First, Eukaryotic nature. Fungi are eukaryotic organisms, meaning their cell contain a true nucleus and other membrane-bound organelle. Second, heterotrophic nutrition. Fungi are heterotroph, meaning they cannot synthesize their own food. Instead, they obtain nutrients by absorbing organic matter from their surrounding. Third, reproduction. Fungi reproduce both sexually and asexually through the formation of spores. Spores are produced in very specialized structure depending on the fungal group such as Sporangia in mold and Basidia in mushroom. Lastly, absorptive nutrition. Fungi digest their food externally by secreting enzymes into the environment to break down complex organelle molecules into simpler compounds which they can absorb. Next, classification in fungi. Fungi are classified into several major groups based on various characteristics such as their mode of reproduction, structure and habitat. Here's a simplified overview of the classification classification of fungi. First, division zygomecota. This fungi reproduce sexually by forming sturdy often black spore cases called zygosporangia. They include break mold and some pen pathogen. Second, division escomecota. Escomycete reproduce sexually by forming spore within a sac like structure called an eschus. This group include yeast, mold, truffle and many plant pathogen like powdery mildews. Third, Division Basidiomycota. Basidiomycete reproduce sexually by producing spore externally on club shaped structure called basidia. Mushroom, bracket fungi, and puffball are examples of basidiomycete. Fourth, Division Citidromycota. Citrate are primitive fungi with flagellated spore. They are often found in aquatic environment and can be parasitic or saprophytic. Last but not least, Division Gymeromycota. This group consists of fungi that form symbiotic relationship with plants, particularly in the roots. They form structure called arbusculus within plant root cell, aiding in nutrient exchange. Hi, this is Miss Afina. Let's continue with uses and example for kingdom fungi. So here the uses of fungi. Recycling. They play a major role in recycling the dead and decayed matter. Food. The mushroom species which are cultured are edible and are used as food by humans. Biocontrol agents. Fungi are involved in exploiting insects, other small worms and help in controlling pests. Spores of fungi are used as a spray on crops. Here are a few general examples. First, mushroom, Basidiomycota, yeast, Escomycota, molds, zygomycota, and escomycota. These examples illustrate the diversity within the kingdom fungi, ranging from unicellular organisms to complex multicellular structures, and highlight their ecological and economic importance. Ever wonder about the tiny creatures you can't see with your eyes? Meet the protists. They are like the superheroes of the microscopic world. Protists are tiny living things, some made of just one cell, others a bit more complex. They live all around us, from puddles to ocean, and even inside other living things. Even though they are small, protists are a big deal. They help keep our planet's ecosystem healthy, doing everything from making food to recycling nutrients. So, get ready to dive into the hidden world of protists where tiny creatures do big things. Of all the kingdom life, kingdom protista perhaps the most diverse and interesting. Kingdom protista spans from microscopic protists to giant kelps that could reach 259 feet in length. Most protists are aquatic. 
the life in ocean, freshwater ponds, lakes, and streams. Parasitic protists are aquatic because they live in watery environment of the whole cell's body fluid. Terrestrial protists are restricted to damp places such as soil and leaf litter. Various modes of nutrient are represented in Kingdom Protesta. The algae of Kingdom Protesta are autotrophs that trap solar energy and convert it to chemical energy through photosynthesis. Predatory proteins like amoeba and paramecium are heterotrophs that obtain energy and nutrient by capturing and ingesting prey. Proteins are the most nutritionally diverse among the carrots. Proteins like euglena are mixotroph. They can gain nutrients by absorbing them across their cell membrane. Hence, they become heterotrophic when light is not available and when they cannot photosynthesize. In ecological context, protista can be divided into three groups. First, fungus like protestants are parasitic and predatory molds that produce spores and obtain nutrients through absorption, such as slime and water molds. Then, animal like protestants include non photosynthetic ingestive proteins, which is phagocytosis, such as protozoa. Lastly, plant like protestants are diverse photosynthetic types, ranging from microscopic cells to huge seaweeds. Most proteins are produced asexually through binary vision like amoeba, whereas those who produce sexually are by syngamy, which is the union of gametes. Proteins also have significant impacts on human health, both as pathogenic and beneficial proteins. The most well-known proteins-related disease, malaria, is caused by the plasmodium parasite. Transmitted through the bite of infected Anopheles mosquitoes, malaria causes fever, chills, and if untreated, can lead to severe complications and deaths. Next, amoebic dysentery, a gastrointestinal illness caused by the parasite Entamoeba histolytica. It spreads through contaminated food and water, particularly in areas with poor sanitation. This disease can lead to severe diarrhea, abdominal pain, and in some cases, liver abscesses. There is an innovative approach called bioremediation. Certain proteins, such as some species of algae and protozoa, are used in bioremediation processes to clean up pollutants from soil and water. Proteins can degrade organic pollutant, absorb heavy metal, and improve water quality. Today we will learn about four major groups of plants. So, the first one is bryophytes. They are called low level of plant because Lack of vascular system, cannot survive in non-watery habitat, and small. But they can adapt by the existence of cuticle, a cellular protective jacket, and have large gametophyte. The next one is pterodophytes. They have two phylum, and they have well-developed vascular tissues for transporting nutrients and water. They also have a life cycle, include dominant sporophyte and independent gametophyte generation. As you can see, pterodophytes have no flower and seeds, so they reproduce through spores. So, the next one is gymnosperms. They have four phylum and call seed producing plant. So, gymnosperms are technically woody plants including trees and shrubs. So, they do not produce flower and have naked seeds. So, gymnosperms will produce through cones and seeds and occur fertilization. Lastly, is angiosperms or flowering plants which covered most of our earth. It characterized by the presence of flower and reproduce involving flowers, which contain reproductive structures called stamens and carpels. So, as you can see, this is a table which characterizes the plant into non-vascular and vascular plants. It also characterizes into seed plants and flowering plants. Thank you, I hope this video can help you. History of plant emergence Life is restricted in the sea because on land, there is practically nothing to eat. Our story began over 3.5 billion years ago when a life first appeared in the ocean. This early life form was simple single cell organism such as cyanobacteria which could photosynthesize. Cyanobacteria, often called blue-green algae, were pioneers. They transformed the Earth's atmosphere by producing oxygen through photosynthesis. The invasion of land began with cyanobacteria followed by green algae and fungi. This is due to the fact that most of them can be found near water edge.
Their organic waste created soil causing mosses and other plants to become established in the newly formed soil and further enrich it. Today, a wide diversity of green plants works wonders by turning water, carbon dioxide into energy with the help of sunlight. Plant General Characteristic Photoautotroph Photoautotroph is the ability to carry out photosynthesis. Possess accessory pigment like yellow and orange carotenoids. Store carbohydrate as starch. Cellulose is the major component of the cell wall. Plant Ancestors Recent data revealed that land plant might descend from a group of green algae called carophyte or stoneworm. They possess a polymer called sapropolonin that prevent exposed zygote from drying out. Land Adaptation in Colonization Root system allow plants to colonize land. The root system have many underground adaptive structure resulting in a large surface area for absorption of soil, water and dissolved mineral ions. In many root systems is also anchor the plants. Shoot system Development of shoot system where the stem and leaf will be adapted for exploiting sunlight and absorbing carbon dioxide from air. Extensive growth of stem and branches become possible due to the settling of cell wall afforded by deposit of liquid. Vascular tissue become increasingly extensive. Xylem conduct water and dissolve ion minerals and phloem conduct products of photosynthesis such as dissolved sugar. Water conservation is crucial for life on land which is fertile from water source. Shoots become protected by a cuticle which is wet seed coat that help conserve water on hot and dry days. Stomata which are tiny opening across the surface of leaf and some stem evolve, they will control carbon dioxide absorption and restrict evaporative water loss. From high plot to die plot dominant, the shift to die plot dominant was an adaptation to land colonization. This is due to the fact that plant diploid phase are fully adapted to life in terrestrial habitats. The diploid phase sporophyte dominates most plant life cycles. Evolution of pollen and seeds In algae and simple vascular plants, the spores are all alike a condition which are called homospores. In gymnosperm and angiosperm lineage, the spores are differentiated into two types which are known as heterospores. This characteristic is the forerunner for seed evolution.